Well, we're going to go right ahead and jump right into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12, and we'll be looking at verse number 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Listen to what the Word of God says. It says, uh, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And of course, that was the New Living Translation. You know what King James says, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And of course, that is our foundational scripture that we'll use on this evening. The title of our teaching is The Year of Transformation, Part 1. And this lesson is the importance of setting goals. The importance of setting goals. Let us all bow for a word of prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus Thanking you, dear Lord, and praising you for this opportunity to come together to study your word. I pray now, God, that you would use me as your instrument to speak life, O oh God, and to rightly divide the word of truth. Have your way, God, in this place. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. The importance of setting goals. Well, I believe that this is the year of transformation. And God is in the transformation business. Now, the scripture here says, do not conform to the pattern of this world or the ways of this world. Yes, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. But it goes on to say, but be transformed. And so in essence, Paul is saying, either you're, you're going to conform or you'll be transformed one or the other. You see, God created all of us to be unique. He created you to be special. God created you to be like nobody else. You have a unique voice, a unique thumbprint, handprint, heartbeat. God does not make any clones. Now, man does, but God doesn't. And God is saying, I want you to be unique, not to be conformed to anyone else's idea of what you should be. But the problem is, we all start out as originals, but we end up as copies of other people. Yes, we get conformed and we get pressured and we get pushed into a mold. So the lesson this evening is, is, is about setting goals, putting your mind on where, where you would like to be at a certain amount of time. And real briefly, I'm just going to share with you six reasons why you need to set goals in your life. Uh, and the first reason is, number one, the Bible lets us know that goal setting is a spiritual responsibility. Yes, yes, goal setting is something that's spiritual. As a matter of fact, God set goals. Yes, he set goals for the universe. He set goals for this planet. God has goals for history as well as eternity. And God certainly has goals for your life. The Bible goes on to let us know that Jesus set goals. In fact, he often announce publicly what his next goal would be. Yes, he would often say, I'm going to go do this now, or I'm going over there. I, I must needs go to Samaria. I have to go here and there. Yes, he would publicly announce in advance what his goal was for the next phase of his ministry. And every person who walked with God in the Bible, you can find examples of them being gold-directed. For example, even the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, he says, I, I, I know that I am not yet what God wants me to be. In other words, I haven't reached my goal, but I keep moving toward the mark. 
Amen. I keep moving toward the goal for what Christ has made me and saved me for. Paul said, I know I hadn't reached my goal, but there's one thing I'm going to always do. I'm going to forget those things which are behind and I'm going to press toward those things which are ahead. I'm going to keep my eyes focused on the goal that I may one day win the price that God called me to receive through Christ Jesus. And all born-again believers, yes, we must think the same way Paul did. Paul was goal-oriented. But, but why is it important for you to set a goal? Because it's a spiritual responsibility. You see, you're either going through life by design or by default. Yes, you're, you're either going to set goals and decide what's important for your life, or other people are going to decide it for you. And if you don't have goals for your life, you are giving control of your life over to somebody else. If you, you don't have goals, you're, you're not even living. You're, you're just existing. If you don't have clear goals for your life, you're just coasting through life, drifting through life. We're talking about the importance of setting goals. Somebody just typed the word goals, goals. So first of all, setting goals is a spiritual responsibility. But then secondly, number two, goals are a statement of faith. Now, a lot of people think that goals are just for, for, for business or for athletes, amen? Or, or things you do that, that's on your job. No, setting goals is a spiritual habit that we all need to develop because goals are statements of faith. In other words, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you set a goal, what you're saying is this, I believe that God wants me to accomplish something over the course of my life. And it becomes my statement of faith. But goals are just statements of faith because goals will stretch your faith. Yes, the bigger the goal, the more faith, your faith will be stretched. And that's what pleases God. Matter of fact, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. So if you don't have any goals, you don't need any faith. And if you don't need any faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. Matter of fact, Paul, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 14 that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if I'm going through life without any goals, I don't need to take any risk. And if I don't take any risk, I don't need faith. And if I don't have any faith, I am being unfaithful and I can never become the man or woman that God has created me to be. We're talking about the importance of setting goals. Somebody just type setting goals. So first of all, setting goals is a spiritual responsibility. Secondly, goals are a statement of my faith. But then thirdly, number three. Goals have a way of focusing my energy. Yes, yes. Another reason why you need to set goals in every area of your life is that goals focus your energy. In other words, they keep you from wasting your time, your money, your repetition, and your energy. Yes, goals will keep you focused. You see, you don't. You don't have time to do everything in this life. And God doesn't expect us to do everything. And if the truth be told, not everything out there is even worth doing. And there are only a few things in life that God has really called us to do. So the key to being effective in life is to do what matters the most and learn how to forget everything else. Now, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26, he says, I do not run without a goal. In other words, 
I, I, I fight like a boxer who's hitting something. I'm not just swinging at the air. You see, some believers are running this life or living this life without a goal. And as a result, they find themselves just running in circles. You ever find yourself being at the same place you felt like you were before? There was an R&B song that came out back in the 80s where you got me going in circles. Whoa, round and round I go. God does not want us to keep going around the same mountain. No, he wants us to stay focused on him. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. So you need to set goals because goals focus your energy and you become more intentional in what you are doing. But then number four, number four, goals keep us going. Goals keeps us going. See, living this life, many times you can hit a brick wall. Yes, all of us will experience some tough times while we're living and going through this life. But don't get stuck there. Just keep on going through those tough times. You see, tough times don't last, but tough people do. So when you find yourself going through something, just keep on going through because there is another side of through. It's called out. So I may go in, I'm going to go through, but I'm coming out. And guess what? I'm coming out with my hands up, Dr. Farr. I'm coming out of this situation. I'm coming out of this status. And the way we do this, we must have a goal beyond where we are right now. The Bible lets us know that Jesus, he endured the cross because he looked forward to the gold and the glory that was set before him. In other words, he saw that there was something beyond the cross. There was some, he knew he was coming back. He knew he was rising again. He knew he was getting up with all power in his hands. That's why he said, if you destroy this temple, I shall rebuild it in three days days. He, he prophesied, he predicted, yes, he looked beyond the pain to the payoff. And a lot of times we get stuck in the pain and we quit. We stop. There's another side to pain. Move past your pain. But if you don't have a goal in your life, there, there, there's nothing to look forward to. There's, there's no hope for tomorrow. Matter of fact, those without goals don't even have a reason to, to get out of the bed in the morning, probably just to eat breakfast and go back in there and lay down and go back to sleep. Job put it this way in Job chapter 6, verse 11. He says, I do not have the strength to endure. In other words, he says, I don't know if I'm going to make it, how I'm going to make it. I need to have something to focus on. I have to have something that's going to keep me going. Plus, when you have a, have a long-term goal, it keeps you from being discouraged from short-term setbacks. Because everybody will have setbacks. Yes, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has failures. In fact, a failure is the only way to succeed. No, you can't succeed in life without, without failing. Why? Because failing is how you learn what works and what doesn't work. F failing, it, it, it teaches you, amen, what to do and what not to do. So don't ever call it a failure. Call it an education. It's a lesson learned. So goals, they keep me going. Goals that keep me going. We're talking about the importance of setting goals. Somebody just type goals, goals, goals. But then number five, goals build my character. Now, now drifting 
through life doesn't build your character, but goals build your character. If you set a goal and you get a vision for your life, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. So if you get a vision, you, you get a goal, God says, I can work with you. I can work in and through you. And what happens inside of you while you're moving toward your goal is what builds character. You see, God, he's more interested in your character than he is your accomplishments. You're, you're not taking your successes to, to heaven. You, you're not taking your career to heaven, but you're taking your character so, so God is more interested in who you are and what you become than he is in what you accomplish and succeed in. And guess what? While I'm working on my goal, God is working on me. Yes, goals, they help build your character. That's what Paul says in Philippians 3 and 12. I keep striving toward the goal, the mark. The prize. Now the word striving, it means it takes energy. It takes effort. It takes discipline. It takes intention. It takes purpose in order to reach your goal. And God says, why are you doing that? Why are you working on your goal? I'm going to build character on the inside of you. So when you get to that point where you achieve it, people are going to look at you and you're going to be different. You're not going to look the same. Amen? You're going to walk different. You're going to talk different. And people will begin to treat you differently because they see something special on the inside of you. God has done a work. I'm not the same. Amen. That's what Tremaine Haw Hawkins says. What a wonderful change that has taken over me, taken place in my life. We're still talking about the importance of. Of setting goals. Somebody just type setting goals. But then number six. Good goals will be rewarded. Yes, good goals will be rewarded. Yes, if you if you have good goals and you set good goals, there's going to be two ways in which you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded on earth by people. And then you're going to be rewarded by God in heaven. Yes, when you have good goals, it, 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 it brings respect. When you have a good goal, it brings honor. When, when you give your life to a good goal, you build a legacy on earth and people will remember you long after you're gone. Dr. Martin Luther King said good goals. He said, I have a dream. And guess what? We still remember that dream. As a matter of fact, we're living the dream. Yes, this is Black History Month, y'all. So we have to keep dreaming. We have to keep pressing and striving for excellence, for better, for better. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 27, if your goals are good, you will be respected. So if you want to be respected, you need to just set some good goals that are good. We must all understand that every goal you set may not be a good goal. And not every goal is a, a good goal that God is going to bless. If it's not good, God's not going to bless it. But how will we know if God will bless our goals? Well, I'm going to close with three final questions. Whenever you get ready to set a goal, you need to ask yourself these three questions. Number one. Will it honor God? Yes. What kind of goal do you think that will honor God? What, what, what kind of goal brings glory to God? You see, any goal that causes you to trust him more, to depend on him more, to, to love him more, to love other people more, to serve him, to serve others, these are going to be good goals. And God, he will bless those goals. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 says, whether you eat or drink or do anything, always do it to honor God, to the glory of God. Yes, everything we do here on earth 
can be done to honor God. As unto the Lord. You, you can even take out the garbage to honor God. You, you can wash the dishes to honor God. You can clean your room or, 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 or clean your car to honor honor God. You can study for a test, my young people, to honor God. How do we honor Him? We honor Him by doing it with the right motive and for the right reason. So the first question, I must ask myself when I set the goal, will, will this honor God? But then the second question, when I set a goal is, is it motivated by love? Yes. This is the second question that, that you must ask yourself when you, when you set a goal, whether it's a goal for your finances, for your, your health, for your relationships. Is this goal motivated by love? You see, God isn't going to bless a goal that's motivated by greed. God is not going to bless a goal that's motivated by competition. God is not going to bless a goal that's motivated by envy or, or motivated by, by greed or guilt or grudges. But when you, when you set a goal out of love, you're saying, God, I, I, I want to do this because I love you and I want to love other people. And God is going to honor that because it's all about love. Yes, life is all about learning how to give and receive love. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14 says, everything you do must be done in love. But then the third and final question we must ask ourselves when we're setting goals and we're through them this evening. Number three, will it require depending on God? Yes, with the goal I'm setting for my life, will this require me to depend more on God? Now, remember what Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith is impossible to please God. And if you don't have a goal that requires faith, then that's not a pleasing to God goal. And then Romans 14 and 23 says, everything that doesn't come from faith is sin. So if you, you have a goal that's so small that it doesn't require any faith to do it, then the Bible says that's a sin. You, you're coming short of the glory of God. You're falling short. And whatever is not of faith, the Bible says it is sin. Now, Proverbs 16 and 9 says, We plan the way we want to live, but only God can make us able to live it. Yes, God has the final Outcome, So we can set all the goals we want, make all the plans we want. But if God has a different plan for our lives, guess what? God's plan will always supersede our plans. So yes, we, we get to plan the way we want to live. But only God, he gives us the power and the ability to actually carry it out. So in essence, my brothers and sisters... In this year of transformation, what I'm saying on tonight is that God wants us to set goals, reasonable goals, attainable goals, so that we can live productive lives here on earth and so that we can receive everything that Jesus died for us to have. The thief coming, but for not to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Well, my time is up, y'all, and I thank God for yours.